what do you think will be the future of quantum computing or where it will be used and how will it change our lives? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a scientist uh, by the name of uh, Roy Amara. And he said, uh, we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run and mm -hmm. underestimate the effect of, uh, of technology in the long run. You know, just based on the use cases and the things that uh, that INQ has said, I think I have the ability to say, well, here, here are some of the things like we'll have better pharmaceutical drugs. So it's probably going to change how trading happens, mm -hmm. uh, how financial markets work. Uh, uh, oil and gas and energy, it's probably going to be a big part of climate change. Uh, batteries, I think we're going to have incredible batteries, mm -hmm. uh, the work that uh, INQ is doing with Hyundai. So those are the short term things. The long term, Sean, I just I think we are grossly underestimating mm -hmm. how this is going to change everything for us. All fields of, of applied science mm -hmm. uh, are, are covered by uh, quantum computing. I think there are going to be things that are going uh, that we can achieve that we we just didn't think were possible. Mm -hmm. I, there, things are going to uh, happen that we never could have imagined. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I felt that same way when Peter Schiffman told us about. Having a quantum computer is like having a superpower. So we don't know yes. where it would be used, but we know it's a superpower. Right, right. right. I, I, I don't know if you remember uh, that, the movie, The X-Men. All the X-Men go to the Professor Xavier school. Yeah. And in the beginning, they have a superpower, but they just don't know how to use it. Mm. I kind of feel like that's how we are with quantum. Mm -hmm. And I think the exciting part is going to be over time, Ion Q really learning uh, how to harness and focus uh, these superpowers. Mm -hmm. Um and I think, and I love that word superpower because it implies that there's just things that are going to happen that we don't think are possible. Mm. My joke has always been, I think future generation three is the TARDIS from Dr. Who. Mm. <laughs> like I thought, you know, it's something like beyond, you know, really beyond our uh, imaginations, because once you start being able to harness the power mm. of uh, quantum mechanics and quantum physics and uh, electrical engineering and, mm -hmm. and computer science and all these disciplines start you know, coming together and you and you and you can control these uh, these uh, powerful disciplines. It's it's going to be uh, shocking, really. Uh, what mm. and I my feeling is Sean is that the team, the senior team, they're way further ahead than they're letting people know. Mm -hmm. I think they've got something pretty awesome in store, mm. and it, and they're starting to understand uh, what what uh, the applications are going to be. They're just not, it's just not in their interest to reveal everything right away. But I think future generations that haven't been made public are powerful and enough that they're starting to understand uh, uh, the impact they're going to have on uh, mm -hmm. on industry and, uh, and and society, you know, as a whole. I feel like I met a Western version of myself, like me meeting you oh. is like reflecting oh, yeah. myself. Oh, yeah. No, I can talk to like that's why when you when you, I, I was like I, I was so excited to talk to you appreciate about what you do Sean is that you're really doing a lot of the the intellectual heavy lifting right the intellectual thinking that's important and necessary for uh for for this technology mm -hmm. just looking at the world's reaction look how the world reacted to that chat GPT mm -hmm. that's, that's just crazy. a chat bot mm -hmm. it's crazy look at the things that they're saying that the quantum compute is going to do Mm -hmm. The world is going to have a very powerful reaction when they're like, mm -hmm. wait a second, <laughs> you know, you know, look how fast, you know, an optimization problem, you know, mm -hmm. I think we arrive at a point in quantum computing of algorithmic qubits mm -hmm. where once you get past 1024 qubits, now we have to start thinking about what are the questions at that point? Mm -hmm. uh, now you start in integrating uh, philosophy and all these other kind of things into it because it starts reaching these kinds of a uh, whole other level of uh, of meaning really and value so that that last question uh sean is the question is what are going to be the impacts so mm -hmm. everyone's kind of waiting now saying can can we can they do it can they not do it can they do it can they not you know will quantum happen what is quantum <laughs> how so that's really where everyone's kind of wrestling with now mm -hmm. what i probably would argue with you is that now we need folks who are starting to d debate, like, mm -hmm. so what impacts are, is this going to have on culture and society? Like, mm -hmm. how are things going to change? And how is this going to affect uh, our identity and civilization? Those are those are much bigger, bigger mm -hmm. issues, but ones that need to be asked because uh, that's 
that's that's how 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 strong uh, an mm-hmm. influence this is go- going to have. I think. Mm. All right. Um, since our time is almost up, we'll wrap up our interview here. Great. Right. Thank you very much for your time, Desmond. Thank. I cannot <laughs> thank you enough, Sean. This like made my year. I'm so mm. excited. Like this was so much fun. Like I, I, I. I this is I I love talking about this topic and it's just great to have someone who uh is as uh you know, um excited about it as mm-hmm. you are and um and I forget those uh, voices saying cri- of criticism mm-hmm. I want to speak on behalf of all the people that you help uh mm-hmm. for the work and I'm just very grateful and I want to thank you for all the hard work that you do and uh this was just a lot of fun for me and thank you so much <laughs>